okay. In yesterday's video, we explored the different types of lodges that exist throughout the mortal realms. Well, today we're going to take a look at the Lords of the Lodge. These are the heroes, the characters that drive these narratives and make this way of life possible. It's important to know before we dig in that there might be a variety in how these roles play out in every lodge, meaning there might be some uh, more rune suns than rune smiters or no rune smiters, you know, all those kinds of things. There's a lot of variety in how a lodge can present these heroes, but a healthy lodge will have just about all of them. And we'll start this off by talking about the Auric Rune Father. We discussed yesterday that the system of government they have is basically a patriarchy, and the Auric Rune Father is the head of that patriarchy. He's the king, so to speak, of the lodge. And he is himself an incredibly deadly warrior that leads the battles he fights in from the front. He carries such weight with him, like kind of momentously, that he can glare at an enemy and they'll start running away. When he goes to battle, his main weapon is the Latchkey Grand Axe, which in and of itself is a massive, gorgeously made, devastating weapon. However, it also serves a dual purpose. It also functions as the key to the Lodge's Vault of Ur Gold making this the single most important item in the entire lodge. Now, as I said, they are incredible warriors in their own right. However, they are also the spiritual leaders of the lodge. They take Grimnir as a surname. So the example they give is there is a rune father named Smurgri Grimnir. And this is just to demonstrate how close they are to the spirit of Grimnir himself, while also adding to their authority. Now, one question that immediately jumped out to me is, why would you carry your most important item into war, right? The key to all of the Urgold. Well, the truth of the matter is, if your rune father goes down in battle and there's no one alive left to reclaim the key, meaning all the other rest of the army is devastated and no one in the forge is alive to go get it, you don't need the key. You're all dead. It just reinforces their mission and their religion in every aspect. It, it acts as a totem or a symbol of their strength, what gives them power, the Urgold back at the base, their god Grimnir, and their mission to obtain it. And when you think about the significance of that item, which is also a deadly weapon, it's important to have it on the battlefield. Now the Runefather doesn't have to go out into every single battle, it's just the more momentous ones where he does. Moving on to the Auric Rune Sons. Now these are the many, many children of the Rune Father. They are impetuous and ambitious, and they all seek to earn the throne of their father when he finally succeeds his power. And to that end, they are constantly competing with one another in battle, trying to kill the most enemies, get some prize skulls, like if you return, it sounds kind of corny, but you know I mean, like when you return with the head of your fallen enemy, whoever can get the most Urgold, and all these guys lead from the front because they want to get in there, be aggressive, again, impetuous, and get these kind of praises and accolades. Because they are trying to stand apart from the rest, they tend to act alone, act as lone hunters, instead of supporting the army as a whole. And because they're so wild and competitive by nature, a wise rune father is going to have many, many sons. There is actually a story in the Battle Tome about a guy who had dozens upon dozens of children, and most of them die in battle because of this kind of quality that they all have. But at the time of secession, only one will ever be named rune father. And the others have a choice to make. They'll either follow their brother, or if they have the sheer charisma and the oaths sworn with the right heads of government and leaders and that, they'll be able to split and form a new lodge themselves. So every time a rune father steps down from his role and elects a new son, it's a time of fracturing, but also solidifying the forge that's left. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a civil war when this happens. It's just a part of their culture. They respect one another that if you cannot follow under the command of your brother, you strike out and you make your own path. Now next up are the Rune Smiters. These are basically warrior priests. They are on the ground, in the thick of battle, and around them what they do is they invigorate and supercharge the runes that are in the warriors around them. And they ensure that every bit of potential energy is used. It makes sense when your society is built on a finite res resource that you have somebody who's in charge of making sure all of it gets used efficiently in battle. Here's the thing, all fire slayers can inherently on some level sense Urgold, that like they know sort of if it's around them, what it represents, that kind of connection to Grimnir like we were talking about. But rune smiters are kind of the next step. They've adapted a much stronger ability to sense out Urgold. They can sniff out a specific piece of Urgold in a chest full of normal gold, 
or a vein of Urgold across a canyon wall so you can tell everyone where to dig for it. And the trial to become one of these guys is very interesting. Basically, they put you in a chamber with a bunch of broken masks of Grimnir. Imagine if someone made a hundred masks of gold, one of them was made out of Urgold, and then all of them got smashed. What you have to do is reassemble one mask completely made of Urgold. So you have to find out all the pieces of Urgold and put that specific one back together. It's kind of a cool trial. I really like that one. And really what they do is they operate on the field, in the thick of it, with the hope that one day they will ascend to being rune masters. So really this is the lowest level of sort of the priesthood, if you will. But then moving up to rune masters themselves, these are the guys who actually craft the runes themselves. Very important to have. They are priests and blacksmiths rather than warrior priests like the rune smiters. And these are the people that really empower a lodge. Their energy, their essence, their craftsmanship comes from a deep connection to Grimnir, and they act as a wise counsel to the Rune Father. And it makes sense that they would be sort of the council head because they can keep a Rune Father on track for the mission, you know, always searching out more Urgold, decisions on how to attain it, things like that. But also, they don't have a dog in the fight when it comes to who is Rune Father. There's no power plays, no politicking there. They are a separate kind of structure that allows them to give good counsel. And these guys have developed that skill for sensing Urgold to another level. They can sense Urgold when it is leagues away. And when a time of war comes where it's all hands on deck, gotta fight a big fight, these guys come roaring into battle. They're described as being the power of Grimnir made manifest on the battlefield. Their skin gets searing hot and everyone around them just kinda goes nuts. All their runes light up and just go ballistic. As they go into war, they usually have an axe in one hand, and the other hand has a torch, a very important one. Uh, fire is a part of the Fire Slayer mythos, an important part of their religious services, but each torch has a coal that's been taken from the Lodge's forge, which is very important. It's very ceremonial. You bring your Lodge's kind of core, the soul of the Lodge, into battle with them. And the last unit in this section is going to be the Battlesmiths. And these guys really are the Mortal Realm's most badass historian. Every lodge in the Fire Slayers is known for its deeds, right? And when I say deeds, I mean the oaths that it's held and the ones it still has to fulfill, the victories it's had in battle, the enemies that it struck down, and a history of all the Rune Fathers that that lodge has ever had. Because these elements lend credibility and honor to every single lodge. A history is a big part of being a Fire Slayer. Well, the Battlesmith is a living memory of all the Lodge has done since its founding. What happens is at some point a Rune Father will go and choose one of his greatest craftsmen, and he will be selected to be the Battlesmith. And only the best smiths can make a icon of Grimnir. It's kind of the rule they have is that anything less than perfection would kind of sully his face. And so these guys are really handpicked. You're the greatest craftsman here. You are qualified to make a icon of Grimnir. And that's essentially what they do. They make a giant icon of his face. Now these icons can look different realm to realm as they pick out different aspects of Grimnir. But on the back of this giant icon, they record the entire history of the Lodge. As they're walking to war, marching to battle, these guys are just chanting off all the histories, all the great deeds that this lodge has done, the things that it survived, and the things it has to survive to do. And after every battle, they immediately stop, bust out a chisel, and put whatever just happened on the back of the icon. So it is a living, active history, moment to moment. So why are these characters so important to the identity of a Fire Slayer Lodge? Well, they make its way of life possible. They lead the army through the military sense, the religion, and maintain its honor with the battlesmiths. And they also chart a course for its future. As they split, several of these characters will kind of shuffle around lodges, things like that. When a rune son leaves, he might take some craftsmen with him, appoint one of them as a rune master, a battlesmith, etc., and begin a new lodge. And what the point is I'm trying to convey is this is a fantastic cycle and a proven formula for success. It's how these people have survived the Age of Chaos, and there's no reason for them to stop. These are the guys who keep the honor of every single lodge, keep its history, and keep it on a path that pleases Grimnir and themselves alive. So friends, those are my thoughts on the Lords of the Lodge. What characters really stand out to you? We are winding down here towards the end of Fire Slayer Week, and I'm so glad y'all have been enjoying it. And I'm going to try and keep up the content, keep it coming as we kind of dive headlong into AOS 2nd Edition. So thank you all so much for watching, and happy wargaming.